Well, I made it to the steam engine place. Soda fountain. It's all manual. I gotta wait for it to warm up. It'll start. That's blinking. 78. That's in there. That's the same as that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of correct time. Of and then you go to 33 and a third, and that'll give you about a half an hour to a stop. This is a big boat. At least they're open today. I'm happy. So this video will probably go on YouTube because they're open. This is it. <laughs> this is the steam engine place. Well, I'm very happy that I came in here. Somebody wanted a video of the steam engine exhibits? Well, you're getting it. You're getting it, folks.
This is my first time in here. I've never been in here before. Last Sunday I went here and they were closed. So I got lucky that I was able to come in here. We even got some steam engines over here. Little ones. old-fashioned gas pumps back in the day nice little place Sawmill, 
Sawmills use these things a lot longer than most industries because they didn't pay for fuel. Whatever they couldn't sell, they burned cheap. There's still places in California with artisanal wine boxes and stuff like that that are using machines like this. A different idea for steam engine is to put it all in one big cast iron piece. You don't have to install it in the factory. You're not concerned about how it's aligned. It's all done at the factory. And it's full of oil. It oils itself. I don't have to open and close valves. These were used a lot in the maritime trades. Something this big would power a nice size steam launch on the Rippasaki. You put 30 of these in a row, three stories tall, and they would power the Titanic. Same kind of engine. in stock. And the amount of industrial power this country had in the 1890s was almost beyond comprehension. They were ready for shipment in boxes. So would they line them up and put one shaft? I mean, they would make a... They were all, well, they actually were geared to a shaft. You oh. could take a particular engine on or off. There were a lot of transmission to the ship nobody thinks about. It. You can make a one cylinder, two cylinder, five cylinder, ten cylinder. Actually, you have this, it's called a triple expansion. Let's do what I'm doing, and then we can talk about triple expansion engines and how you can make steam do more work for you. It bores some people to tear in front of I'll talk to you all day. <laughs> so we're looking here at sort of what we were doing in the 1890s to 1900, 1905. And then, in the fight to make things more efficient, this engine is our, early, our newest engine. It's 1925. And to make a, an analogy most people would recognize, this is the Duesenberg of steam engines. This is the best you can buy in 1925. And it was purpose built for this hotel, which has been family owned since the Civil War and still is. In the 1920s, they were modernizing and they wanted electric elevators, intercoms, fire alarms, electric lights, hot and cold running water in each room, steam heat, clean steam for the laundry, the pressing room, and the kitchens, and they wanted to pump water from their reservoir up into the hotel so they could go back to their rooms by gravity. Down there, you have to maintain the boilers because they're like coffee makers, they get scaly. And if you get scaly, you lose efficiency. Ultimately, they can corrode, and ultimately, a corroded boiler explodes. So a good steam plant is always using one boiler and cleaning the other. So there's plenty of work to do. I'm going to give this the same kind of steam that I did, or air, that I did that one. And you'll see that it runs a lot faster. It's 125 horsepower.
so you should go three hundred RPM. If you start to speed up too much, that closes the valve. If you put it on the strings, it'll open the valve up. Well, that was probably going at 150 RPM. It should have gone 300, so it would, it would fly. This is a whole different animal here. The energy here comes from the gigantic mass of that flywheel, which weighs 30,000 pounds. And it's only designed to go to 70 RPM. And at 70 RPM, the wheel is spinning at 45 miles an hour. Oh, okay. So if you're going to go to the tractor trailer, this thing down the road. Wants to go with one of stoppers. I'm going to open the oilers, inject some oil into the cylinder. You're going to do the green and we'll see how you do the spin. The company that made the engine in 1905 cast us new bearings. That's a big steam engine. That's a big steam engine. I like to stop it in a place that's most efficient for it to start it. When you go it, I can move it manually. And I stop it about three degrees short so I can show you what it takes to do that with my hand. Yeah. It's Yeah, 
Marine Sword with an ion with pumps, and they use them to pump up the trenches in World War I. The diary industry could simply, once we got rolling after 1900, we could have produced Britain when it came to the big stuff. So is that water from the combustion process coming off this side? Or no, no, this is, this is a very expensive engine. It has a lot of things that we drop later. It has a water pump, fully jacketed water jacket. It's pumping water up there as it heats. It goes up here, goes back down here, sprays out with screen, it cools down, and it goes to the bottom and is recycled. Also, it's a gasoline pump. Uh, and both of those were dropped later on when they realized well, we could just put a hopper around the thing, just pour water in, keep pouring as it boils away. That's much cheaper than this. And they did, they did away with the gas pump because they realized that suction is such that they could pull the gas up from the tank anyway. They put a little check valve in it so the gas wouldn't run back down. That's cheaper, better. These things got cheaper and cheaper and were made by the tens of thousands. And they're still around. This one you have to be careful with and drain it in the winter because it would crack inside. But the cheaper engine, you just sponge it out and you're done. So this thing works. You put it away, forget about it, you come back a week later, it hasn't died. It doesn't need food. It doesn't need clothes like a hired person. So you haul it out and you pump the water for the week through the farm. You water your animals, you can run your washing machine, your uh, generator, most importantly for people. Yes, three horsepower. Wow. This wouldn't be something a household would have, would it? I gotta tell you, I had a couple in here yesterday who live in a, a house built in 1891, and they said their shed addition in the back of the house had a whole wall of brackets for early car batteries. So that was a house that was powered by DC, mm -hmm. and they had to have a generator. Charge. Charge. Exactly. Charge. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But if you have a generator, and a machine like this, you can be in Iowa, and your whole life you've heard your uncle play the same song every Saturday night, and you only want to get on the guitar. The battery is just about going on the Kodak ZE-1. I'm surprised it lasted when it did. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this video. Those of you who like steam engines. speed the governor would not open the valves. The valves would exactly you can see on that one the, the, the governor does two things <coughs> it uh, disconnects the spark center when the engine reaches a certain that's why those people call it hit and miss engines it sound like it. but hit and miss to me means it's not working right right in Maine on boats and where I grew up they're called make and break engines it makes a circuit and it breaks the circuit so as it, as it speeds up, it breaks the circuit so it can't create a spark. At the same time, the same mechanism is opening the intake valve, so, sorry, opening the, the exhaust valve and propping it open so that there's no suction being created so that it doesn't pull gasoline in that's not going to be exploded. So at the same instant, when it slows down enough, it releases the valve so the intake valve closes. Right, the exhaust valve closes. They're all atmospheric. Just spring, spring around it. Now it's creating suction. It sucks gas and the same revolution. The circuit's now open and it fires. It sounds fairly efficient. It sounds, it's extremely efficient. Yeah, it sounds like it's not wasting energy, burning it's gas on every cycle. Exactly. Right? So no. the fly wheel storing energy, excess energy, yes. and then only when that drops down to a certain level, that's right. It's a fire. Yeah, and you can hear a rhythm, put it on a phone wood saw, you know, and you go, pop, 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 I hope you enjoyed the video of the steam engine exhibits. Thanks for watching, folks.